Hello, friends. I know it's been a while. We're going to be playing a spooky game today. It is called Anatomy. All right. So, for anything else, this is, uh, again, this is called Anatomy. Uh, it's made by someone, uh, username Kitty Horror Show. Uh, if you have any interest in this at all, uh, after I describe kind of what it is, uh, it's literally three dollars. It used to be free. It's three dollars. It's fantastic. Uh, it's it's worth it for sure. But um, we find ourselves in this home. It's very quiet, and it's kind of a it's not a walking simulator per se, but it's close. Um, but it's a spooky game. So you know, stick around. If you are interested in it after a couple minutes, go check it out yourself. Literally $3, easy to buy. You can pay more if you want. It's kind of one of those sites where you can pay a little bit more to support the game if not, but it base costs 3 bucks. It's worth it. So, Very simple controls, too. So, Okay, door won't open. You do have a jump, and you have a crouch. Um, I'm going to try not to sniffle through this because uh, my allergies are still hitting me pretty hard, but... Okay, and here's the basic procedure in the game. Tape. Put it in. In the psychology of the modern civilized human being, it is difficult to overstate the significance of the house. Since as early as the Neolithic era, humankind has defined itself by its buildings. Buildings for worship, buildings for socializing, buildings for protection, even buildings for the commemoration of the dead. But of all the structures that mankind has invented for itself, there is little doubt that the house is that which it relies upon most completely for its continued survival. All right, there's a tape in the dining room. I'm going to try and stand here. It's um, relative to how close you are to the recorder, so there was a little bit where I was trying it like right here, and it was super loud. So I'm going to try and stand in the same spot so you can hear it pretty well. Oh. Dining room. There it is. The house is one of the key elements that separates modern humanity from its more primitive antecedents. No other creature goes to such lengths to create lasting, permanent shelter for itself nor regards such shelters with such reverence and import. Why do human beings of our modern age foster this tremendous sympathy toward their homes? There are many reasons, of course, but perhaps it is due in some small part to seeing them as a reflection of ourselves. Hmm. The tapes are pretty interesting, honestly, about how we perceive our own home. Crap, I didn't even see. Did it say it was upstairs? Let's go check. What's this? A bathroom? Oh, it was in the bathroom. That was a lucky guess. And I really like the VHS type um, artifacting. It's pretty cool. of the house is such that this analogy is less superficial than at first it may seem. To carry it further, if we were to dissect a house as we might a human cadaver, we would find ourselves able to isolate and describe its various appendages and their functions in a decidedly anatomical fashion. There is even a fair number of direct comparisons to be drawn between those organs of a house and those of a human body. Hmm. There's a tape in the garage. So the first few tapes are pretty tame. Nothing nothing crazy. We don't really know why we're in this house. We don't know what's going on. It's obviously dead quiet. We don't know if there's anything else here with us. Oh, the tapes kind of give off like a faint light. That's kind of nice. 
is a big garage. Oh wow, you have a run? Jeez, that's fast. Freaks me out. For example, let us examine the living room. Often the dominant space of a house is ground level, as well as typically the center of activity in a well-populated home. The living room is very much the heart of the house. While a human heart circulates blood to oxygenate the body's extremities, the living room circulates people, activity, communication. It is the room most likely to be found beating, as active and vivacious as its name would imply. The comparison is only strengthened when we consider also that the living room is most commonly the room to contain the fireplace, making it additionally a locus of actual physical heat. There's a tape in the living room. A little bit of this early part I do remember. Some freaking creepy art on the wall. Some sort of dissection going on there or something. I don't think I'd be able to find these tapes without that little glow they give off. It is easy to think of the kitchen and dining room as the stomach or digestive system of a house, though this comparison is tenuous. By contrast, the function and analog of a bathroom should be immediately obvious. <laughs> the hallways and corridors of a house are its veins, providing circulation coursing throughout its frame. A staircase bears more than a passing resemblance, both physically and symbolically, to a spine. The windows of a house serve much the same purpose as eyes, and anyone who has ever rounded a bend or a long drive and come suddenly face to face with a tall, dark manor will tell you that it is difficult to shake the impression that the house, through its lightless windows, is a creature capable of vision and intelligence. Hmm. That is interesting. Say upstairs? Oh, on the stairs? Oh, because we were just talking about the spine. The bedroom is perhaps the room that most eludes direct comparison in this fashion. At a stretch, and allowing for a bit of poetic sympathy, it might be said that the bedroom is not unlike the human mind, or those parts of it which dictate thought and imagination. In the bedroom, dreams are dreamt. Passions are ignited. Epiphanies are experienced in cold sweat at early hours. In the bedroom is where people invariably spend the majority of their time, though comparatively little of it whilst conscious. Tape in the bedroom. I like the comparisons being drawn. I don't know if... if it's Kitty Horror Show that's the one recording his voice there, or he had or he or she had someone else do it. I'm not sure, but or if it's something that's already been written or but it's it's pretty awesome nonetheless. So I said the sensitivity is a bit nuts. Let me see if I can turn it down one. Oh, that's better. Jeez. It's like someone still lives here. Like, there's still furniture. Is it our house? Man. 
and it's eerily quiet. No footsteps, nothing. And yet, this analogy is an incomplete one, for obviously the mind is an exceedingly complex thing. If the bedroom represents the thinking, dreaming part of the brain, then it is the basement that represents those lower, unconscious parts. The basement is dark. It is buried. It is a place full of cobwebs where memories are stored. A poignant comparison, truly. Often the unnerving uncertainty that comes with considering the deeper aspects of the human psyche is not unlike gazing down at the swimming blackness pooled at the bottom of a basement stairwell. It is a place we spend our childhoods filling with monsters that will lay for years in patient silence. It is a place that, barring some specific errand, we seldom ever want to go. That's super true. I hated going to the basement when I was a little kid. And I always thought there was something down in there. And there was always a light right at the top of the stairs. But it was it was almost more of just a small food storage, like, cellar basement thing. But, man, that, that feeling of, yeah, staring down the steps into the darkness is something that really sticks with you. All right, cool. We can see where the tape is. Yeah, I would hate being in this basement. There's just something about it that's freaky. I forget about the run. Jeez. Something jumps out at me. I'm going to poop my pants. Let's shut that. Of course, this comparison, though appropriate, is a very heavy-handed one. And often the basement is little more than a storage space littered with the corpses of spiders and wood lice. While poets and psychoanalysts no doubt dread the thought of a dark basement, in truth, it is the bedroom, the waking mind, that place of dreams, it is actually the most frightening of all. Tape in the master bedroom. Okay, so I think the one at the end of the hall was... Whoa! It's super dark. Oh gosh. And the way things kind of fade into view. Was that there when I walked in? Whoa, what? The whole room changed. Oh, it's teeth. Teeth. What the crap? It is here, in the bedroom, that we are at our most vulnerable. Each night we shut our senses to the world for hours at a time, trusting in the house to keep us safe until next we wake. In this state of extreme vulnerability, we will spend something like 20% of our lives. Anything might stand beside us, watch us, keep us company until dawn, and we would never perceive it. We can only pray that the house will not let such things carry on as we sleep. In this way, during these hours, the bedroom seems less like a mind and more like a mouth. For it is here that the house is most likely to betray us. It is here that we place ourselves most at the house's mercy and spend each night hoping that it will not bite down. Oh, I don't like that at all. Okay, we're going to stop there. Uh, this has multiple endings. Um, 
And actually, real quick, let's check out. I think when we boot this up again, it's a little different. Let me check. Oh yeah, that screen was a little more warped than before. Oh, and there's definitely an ominous sound. Okay, well, we'll call it there for this episode, and we will continue our uh, exploration of this house in the next episode. Thank you for joining me, friends. I hope to talk to you soon. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, I hope you have a great day. See you, friends.